Okay. Uh, just like pi was discovered, pi is like 3.1415, whatever, whatever, whatever. There is another number that was discovered that showed up in many different patterns of things. Okay? And this is the number E. This is the number E. So we just write that down? Okay. Yes. So E, when you see E, first of all, all your calculators should have an E on them somewhere. All right. E, I don't care if you really know its value. I think it's good to know it's a little bit less than 3, but I don't care if you memorize a bunch of digits. All right. Um, it's a little smaller than 3. E is approximately 2.71828. It goes on forever, just like pi goes on forever. There's no repeating. It's an irrational number, meaning you can't write it as a ratio, just like pi cannot be written as a ratio. Yes, sir? Does it need to be underlined? Okay. No. Okay, I didn't know. Nope, sorry, that's yeah, a good question. Yep. Um, nope, E. So when you see E, E does have a value, just like pi has a value. Okay, um, E is about 2.71828. E was discovered, I believe, by a guy named Bernoulli. Um, he was messing with compound interest. He was, and then it ended up showing up in a lot of other places, but I think it was first discovered when he was messing with compound interest. I think the story goes, he thought, okay, I invest a dollar, and I get 100% interest at the end of the year. Okay, so if you invest a dollar and you get 100% interest at the end of the year, how much do you have now? Two dollars, right? Okay, because you get 100% of what you have, so now you're at two dollars. And then he goes, all right, well, what if instead of getting 100% interest at the end of the year, let's say I got 50% interest at the end of June and then another 50% interest at the end of the year. So in other words, it was compounded twice, right? So if you think about a dollar, if I get 50% interest at the end of June, now how much is my account worth? Dollar fifty. And then, at the end of the year, I get another 50% interest, but this time I'm getting 50% interest on that $1.50 that I had. What's 50% of $1.50? 75. $75. So I had $1.50, now I get another $0.75. Cents. So now, at the end of the year, if, my, if it was compounded twice, instead of ending up with $2, I would end up with $2.25. So when that interest got compounded twice, I ended up with more money, right? Well, what happens if I compound the interest three times? Four times, more money, more money, more money. Well, it doesn't keep growing. It actually levels off. Guess where it levels off? Right there. Gabby Russo, please report to like the secondary office. That is like the Gabby amount of money Russo you would have the secondary office. if that compound interest was calculated nonstop, like every millisecond. That's how much you have at the end of the year. That's where the limit is. That's, that's like the highest it can get. All right, so that's kind of how E was discovered and then ended up happening in a whole bunch of other places. You don't need to know that, just a little history there, okay? Um, but E happens often enough that we have buttons on our calculator for it, and then we actually even use these natural logarithms quite often. There's a button for that on your calculator. It should be close to your log button. It looks like a 1N, but it's LN. It's a natural log, okay? All that a natural logarithm is is a logarithm with a base of E. That's all that a natural logarithm is. It's a logarithm with a base E. Just like your regular logarithm is a logarithm with a base 10. A natural logarithm is a logarithm with a base E. All of these properties are still true. So if you would ever see this, natural log 5 plus natural log 4, you could rewrite it as natural log 20 because I can multiply them together, right? Using the product property. So all of the log properties are still true when you're dealing with natural logarithms. Natural logarithms are just another type of logarithm. They will come up in a lot of the application problems that we do later on in this unit when we start getting into story problems. When do you use natural logarithms? When you have a base E. Okay? That's my really quick synopsis about natural logarithms. Some of the other notes that you're seeing up here, um, because we talked about natural logarithms, these are the type of logarithms we started with, right? Common logarithms are logarithms with a base 10. When you see log 100, it means log base 10 of 100. So you got common logarithms that have a base 10. Natural logarithms are logarithms with a base E. So it's just a special type of logarithm. We'll get more into some examples later on. I did some examples of mental math 
with natural logarithms. I asked the other class, what's the natural log of e? Well, 1. Why? Well, because e raised to the first power equals e. What's the natural log of 1? Well, 0, because e raised to the 0 equals 1, and so on. Okay? So, that's my quick summary of E. We'll use that a whole bunch. Okay? And then lastly, quick review, change of base formula. This will show up quite often. It's really good to know. If you see log base B of a number, you can do this division. All right? You can do the log of the top number divided by log of the bottom number. I can... Ah, I will prove to you why this works and maybe do an example next week. I'm sorry I'm out of time um, for a Friday. Try to work in your logarithm unit down at least through your change of base practice for Monday. Okay? And finish up exponents if you haven't done so. All right. Thanks.